To say EA has had a tough relationship with Star Wars fans would be a massive understatement. The company's famously botched releases of both Battlefront games has become the stuff of internet legend. So when their latest swing at the IP, the Respawn Games developed Jedi Fallen Order was released back on November 15th, much of the fandom prepared itself for disappointment. In fact, few games in recent memory have been released to such a pessimistic fanbase. In most people's minds, including my own, it had been almost a decade since a good Star Wars game had been made. So to put it mildly, this game had its work cut out for it. But did it deliver? Well, after having played through the entire game and finished it up a few days ago, that's what I'm here to discuss. In this video, I will review Fallen Order in three sections. First, the things I enjoyed about the game, followed by the things I wasn't so fond of. Lastly, I will give my final score and whether or not I would recommend it. So let's go ahead and begin. For starters, Jedi Fallen Order is a gorgeous game. The environments are absolutely stunning and chock full of rich detail. The character models, with a few exceptions, look phenomenally lifelike. The weapons all look and sound very good, from the humble blaster rifle carried by your run-of-the-mill stormtrooper, to the elite weaponry of the purge troopers. All have a nice weight to them. The lightsaber damage effect particularly stands out, be it a charred slash across an enemy's armor, or watching them split in two as Cal cuts through them like butter. It looks and feels as impactful as it should, and I really appreciate their attention to detail on that. The combat system overall is amazing. There's a nice variety of skills and moves available, and much like the Soulsborne series of games it borrows from, is very strategic in how you must approach fights. Dash in, flailing about with no regard for defense or strategy, and you will quickly find Cal lying in ruin at the wrong end of a monster's fist, a Knight Brother's mace, or a Purge Trooper's staff. Fight through it though, and you'll be feeling like a god as enemies that once seemed like a nightmare die like the little bitches they are. Unlike From Software's famous series of games, however, Jedi Fallen Order does offer players the opportunity to lower the difficulty should one want to do so. Personally, I don't recommend this as I find the game to be at its most entertaining when you are forced to use every skill at your disposal to solve a tough fight. Overcoming these challenges and turning into a whirlwind of death who slaughters anyone in his way is so rewarding and I just feel like it would cheapen the experience to play it on story mode. Though I suppose it is nice that they added the option for people who just want to watch the story without having to labor through the combat's learning curve. The voice acting is great. All of the actors did a bang up job, but in my humble opinion, the unnamed heroes in this regard are the stormtroopers. From smack talking Cal to begging him to fall over dead to shitting themselves in fear of him, the stormtroopers never fail to provide a good chuckle, and I really want to shout out the people who did their voices. Just a phenomenal job. The story, while not anything out of this world, is solid and presented very well. You can tell the people writing this are either huge Star Wars fans themselves or did a very thorough job researching before they started. I always enjoy seeing some of the major events of the saga from another point of view, and one of the highlights for me was the flashback to Order 66. Watching young Cal desperately try to escape with his master was tragic, and it's really cool to see this event from the perspective of someone who wasn't a major player in it. We always see things from the eyes of Obi-Wan or Anakin or whoever, but the betrayal of the Jedi and subsequent fall of the Republic was a far-reaching event that affected hundreds of worlds and billions of people, not just the big names in the universe. So for me, this was definitely the coolest part of the story, with the only exception being the end. Oh my god, that was so fucking cool watching Vader wreck face. I love that they made him completely untouchable too. Even his data sheet says, just run bro. Beating Inquisitors is one thing, but Vader is so out of Cal's league it's not even funny, and the game was very clear to show this. I thought the end of Rogue One was badass, but this was even crazier in my opinion. Watching the full wrath of a Sith Lord was a sight to behold, and Cal is quite lucky EA was worried about sequel potential, because that's the only reason him, BD, and Seer made it out alive.
Exploration in this game is awful. The inability to fast travel between meditation circles is just rude, and it seems like it's only there to artificially inflate your playtime. Hell, even Dark Souls 1 gave you the ability to fast travel between bonfires once you made it out of Anne Orlando, but Fallen Order just has you run around aimlessly on these never-ending maps. The worst offender of which being Zepho, which becomes a god-awful mess by game's end. Even once you figure out the ice caves are basically the planet's subway station, you'll still be trudging for what feels like an eternity. I really hope the sequel decides to fix this. The platformer aspects are good for the most part, but some of the slides get really annoying. Maybe it's just me because I suck at these sort of things, but if I never see one of them again it wouldn't bother me in the least. Thank god for force pull at least to increase your margin of error some and make them semi bearable. Too bad you don't unlock it until about halfway through the game. So until then you're just going to be taking that ice stick. Lightsaber parts being only aesthetic seemed like a missed opportunity to me. I don't see why they couldn't make each set of parts build around certain abilities. One for blocking, one for stronger force push, etc. I'm not saying I want to be able to pull a Skyrim and build crazy glitched gear so I can beat everything in the game in one hit, but given the huge pain exploring is, it would be nice to be rewarded with something other than a crappy poncho. Which brings me to my third complaint. The ponchos look awful. I think there was three I actually liked in the whole bunch, because they looked very Clint Eastwood spaghetti western to me, but the other 10 or 12 just look like various space hobo wear. Say what you want about the Empire, but at least they give their people cool looking armor. Poor Cal is forced to run around all these dangerous areas just to look for something he could have found at the Goodwill store up the street from me. Let's hope this gets changed. There are a few minor graphic issues. First, when it comes to the characters' faces, primarily Seer and Cal. For whatever reason, her eyeballs stick out about four inches further than they should, and Cal can't seem to get rid of this weird bubble-like underbite. Cal also does this weird thing where he'll spin his neck around past his shoulders if someone is talking to him and you turn away from them. Dude's definitely going to need a chiropractor after all of this. I also had a few weird instances where enemies bugged out into the floor and hits not registering on them. The weirdest by far though was the last fight with Trilla. She threw her lightsaber at me and when it came back to her it just sat there mid air spinning while she kept fighting me with an invisible stick. As I said earlier, the game looks wonderful, but it certainly isn't without issues on this front. Of course, most games have some slight problems on launch, and I would say about 90% of the time there's no problems. I was also playing on a PS4 Pro and not a souped out gaming PC, so your mileage may vary. Jedi Fallen Order is an awesome game, and I definitely think anyone who is a fan of Star Wars or Dark Souls style games should check it out. It certainly isn't without its problems, but it's the best effort we've gotten on a Star Wars game in a long time. And I think a really solid template for future games. With a few tweaks, this could be one of the best action adventure games on the market, but unfortunately its flaws keep it from flying quite as high as it could for me. Still, completely worth your time to play. 8 out of 10 in my book. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm always interested in hearing other people's perspectives. I appreciate you watching this video and don't forget to like and subscribe.